a million moons and some three decades back when at the tender 1415 tinder wasn't the temptation i had to resist google wasn't the guru we had and mr zuckerberg was still somewhere shitting in his diapers <laughs> a few biology chapters were the only sex education we had so basically it was us and our hormones to figure it all out, the good, the bad, and whatever goes in between. Jane Austen, Bronte sisters, they were all my favorite, their epics, my favorite refuge in pals. So my teenage, that could have been, should have been a party of crushes, infatuations, was under a serious spell of platonic romance, ideal relations, and what not. So the first time I had my crush, who the hell let my dogs out, was the question I kept asking myself. Romance then was on an indefinite fast for years. I was flirting, but only with grades and academics. Around 22, when I was done with all my degrees in economics, but couldn't understand a zilch about my own diminishing marginal happiness, I realized that somewhere maybe I need to end that fast. Quite coincidentally, my parents proposed a match of a boy from a family they had known since years. And yes, let me tell you, even I had managed to check him out a bit. No Facebook timelines, no Twitter profiles, but we had our indigenous technologies and we were masters at that. So the D-Day arrived, the family carnival began, and the plan and offer was that the girl and the boy will take a call after having a heart-to-heart -heart talk. Now, within an hour, I realized it was as if the Tinder profiles had perfectly matched. Let me tell you, only of the families. An hour more, another hour, and I see a heavenly glow on my mother's face. And the way she is lovingly looking at the boy, it is as if she has just delivered him. And um, all I know is my mother, India, has already swiped him right on this daughter's behalf. Restless? No. Fidgety? No. Desperate? No. Trust me, it's difficult to put up that show when you have no candies to crush, no Pokemons to catch, and no statuses to update that here I checked in five hours back in this family curated blind date. So done with a little of my patience, I walked into those family conversations and I straight away looked in the boy and said, sir, now can we please have a chat? There we were, me and he, just by ourselves. And you know, there was this one script saved in my hard disk here for years that was dying to be performed in a one-to-one -one like this. And all excited, I was about to shoot off. But this guy, he took the center stage and drove the conversation towards a complete, complete monologue and went, kept going on and on and on. And then if that wasn't enough, he suddenly asked for my hand. Now my brain did signal me that lady, hold your horses. But this heart of mine, it was in some heady trance. And before I could figure out anything, his fingers were reading the lines on my palm. What next? We had an engagement that lasted three years. Many of our dates were like Kavi Samelans, where my poetries I then read, and I assured that he heard. Somewhere love came on board, we never know when. All in all today, 22 years of being together. More than that, 22 years of being as much in sync as chalk and cheese. If it is my ground, it has to be his skies. If it is my pastels, it has to be his brights. If it is my soft steps, they have to be his gritty strides. But then I often ask myself, lady, would you have had it any other way? And the answer I get is nay, nay, nay. And yes, lest I forget, somewhere between this being mad at each other and being made for each other, we also made a boy. He's today 17, a typical millennial kid, at least twice a day, he looks at us like that and says, hashtag couple goals. <laughs> and we know that this bump is being sarcastic. Thank you.
I look like a stern person and I will remain stern if you don't like, subscribe or share our story and our channel. But if you do these things, I can be very friendly and give you a creepy friendly smile.